everyone. Bernie Arneson here of Telecompetitor and Pivot. Thank you so much for joining us for the latest installment of our Broadband Innovator video series, where we invite industry leaders to come and talk with us about important broadband industry developments. I have with me today, Dean Mischke of Finley Engineering, and Dean is a vice president there and a professional engineer as well. So welcome, Dean. Good morning, Bernie. How are you this morning? Doing wonderful. We're gonna be talking with Dean today about a very timely issue in our industry, in the broadband industry, and that is the supply chain challenge and its implication on broadband network construction. So I wanna start uh, this uh, discussion with you today, Dean, around the root causes of uh, this supply chain issue. I mean, we hear it all in the news, uh, it's impacting more than just the broadband industry. It's impacting just about everything. And so what are some of the root causes of, of this issue? Uh, from your perspective, I mean, there's, there's an absolute global uh, impact here. Uh, there's some, you know, some demographic issues. There are other issues, but but let's let's start with kind of the root causes and, and how you see them. Well, you, you mentioned the news, and, and when I was first asked to, uh, to uh, do research on this topic, uh, I said, "Well, I'm not an economist. This is you know beyond my scope." And they said, "Well, we really want you to dig into this a little bit," and so I did. And you know, the obvious thing is you go look at the news. Uh, but unfortunately, the news covers the things that are easy to talk about and grab people's attention, ships in ports, COVID, all these other things. And, and they, they really missed some of the root causes that I found as I, as I dug into this. And um, you know, as I started figuring out why we were having such an issue, uh, one of the first obvious things that came up is, is the length of the supply chain. You know, it used to be that uh, you know, you knew the length of the chain. You you only had to go back two, three uh, lengths or to the next village or town to find where something was made or produced. Today anymore, the average person cannot find the end of the supply chain on just about anything they buy, unless they happen to go to a local farmer or a local artisan or something like that. But even with them, their materials are coming from all over the world now. So that's probably the largest uh, impact of that. One of the interesting uh, demographic items that I studied was the um, effective labor force or the labor gap and that is the number of people capable of working versus the number of people that are actually working and um, uh, COVID uh, significantly lengthened that gap in just about every state but a few and so what you have is is you now have less people interested in being in the traditional workforce they're finding their own uh, choice of occupation be it media content or uh, any of these other things that are grabbing people's attention now, but not in essence in the effective workforce. Also, part of the issue would be kind of this management or manufacturing philosophy that's been adopted over the past few decades, this kind of just-in-time philosophy, right? That That's playing a role in exacerbating this supply chain issue, right? So just-in-time was developed by Toyota. Uh, they found out that if they uh, could have a part arrive uh, 15 minutes prior to going onto the car that they could get rid of a tremendous amount of warehousing uh, and save a significant amount of cost and um, uh, the rest of the world adopted it in force but a lot of them forgot the one key part uh, that Toyota realized and, and corrected and if you look at the auto manufacturers they probably have fared better than say some of the, the, uh, the um, US manufacturers they looked at every key component and said, what's my, what's my emergency supply for that component and how much do I need to keep around? Whereas, um, you know, several of the car manufacturers in the United States said, okay, I'm not building cars. They relinquished their chip allocations for that year. And it went someplace else. And now they're scrambling to try to get it back and they haven't succeeded. So this whole aspect of, of just in time really um, just made things worse. Um, and then along with that, the amount of purchasing. The United States didn't slow down on buying things. People were home and bored. And so they continued to purchase. And so uh, the supply chain is continuing to get worse and, and will keep going in that uh, direction. 